Okay, welcome back to another van video everybody. I'm sort of going to change the format up slightly. We're going to go into probably a bit more week to week builds as the build of this draws to the close. Um, so we'll get this video underway. Okay, if you've been following these videos, you may have hopefully already seen the insulation video as well as the floor video. From this part of the series now, we're going to go into this week by week format where I document how and sort of what stage the build is at, sort of focusing on a part of it. The part of it right now is panelling. Now all the panelling around here, it's not conventional wood panelling. I've decided to go with 4mm marine ply. I use marine ply for a lot of stuff. Probably it has been a little more difficult than traditional wood panelling because you've got to get your templates right from the start. You've obviously got to make squares in the wall because of the curved nature of a van. It's not just one measurement sort of suits all in a traditional square room. So that wasn't so much a challenge in itself, just just you have to be a bit more particular with things. Uh, this wall down here, I made this join here a square and worked off that. With the roof up here, I made this line following down here the square line. And that basically means that's where you work off and that's where you shape everything else in accordance to that one off line. Right now, as it stands right now, you can probably see there's part of a wall up here. These have actually been varnished. Uh, this is part of the cabinetry. This is basically almost ready to be fully permanently mounted in here. We've got seat seat here. I'll go over a full layout once I actually get up to the sheds. We've got a heck of a lot of wind out there today. So if you do hear any drumming on the walls or anything, it's probably because of the wind. We've got seat back here, seat back here. This one I'm currently sitting on, which is back left, is fully for solar and electrics. I'm gonna keep all the electrics down here, all the solar, everything under here. This is going to be like a dry pack sort of storage for sort of my clothing as well as like any wet dive gear, surf gear, any stuff like that we may have on board. One thing I do wanna to touch on too, is safety. Now safety with power tools. I've been using power tools for years and years and years and I've yet to have an injury, except you may have noticed this on my hand. The other week, there's a bit of blood splatter on this seat back here and it was actually from a planer. I put an electric planer down on there and it wasn't sitting on something even and it's rolled over and just touched my hand. And what's happened is that I ended up with a couple of stitches in my hand and then yesterday I've actually pulled the stitches. So um, I've had to go back to the emergency department and get it all sorted. So I'm fine, the, the blood loss was for a minimum, all things considering. So that's just something to note. When you're working with power tools, be very, very careful. Okay, now these back seats, they are actually made out of, um, I do screen printing here. And these right here are actually screen printing frames. They matched up with here perfectly, to like basically to the millimeter. So that saved a bit of um, mucking around when it came to building. All they had to do was put these in. Um, and screw them together, made it quite quick, quite easy building of these rear seats. As you can see, the wheel wells under here are plenty of storage. Okay, and key things when it came time to designing the cabinets, I wanted to basically build the cabinets in here to basically maximise space. I didn't want to build a nice square, well it is square, but I didn't want to build a, just a factory floor square set of cabinets are uh, basically with gaps and things like that. everything single thing is curved and different in here so it's basically been built to shape of the sheds we what we're going to do here is i'm not going to run a fridge to start with i'm just going to run a cool box this space is for that there we're going to have another shelf here we're going to have another cooker shelf here which slides out onto the bench top you can see this cabinet wall here behind me, which that's where the bench top is going to go, um, shelf, shelf. They're all, all done. I'm basically at the stage now where I've got to make this front face. What I'm doing for the front face as well is leaving open holes with the nets because I've heard some good, good sort of feedback on stuff like those. I don't want cabinets actually opening, it, opening into the space and drawers are just a pain in the neck to build. So that's kind of where I have got to with all the planning for that. As for the back of the van, and back here as mentioned earlier what I've built these boxes out of, I'm going to have a table here as you've seen in probably half of the van builds you see. I placed a premium on having a good workspace where I can edit videos and photos and stuff like that, which meant the ability to be able to sit here and have a comfortable place to work, that was, that was a higher priority than having a permanent bed base here. Okay, and as far as protecting all the panels, it's probably a bad example. 
All the panels here are a, a two-pot varnish, pretty serious varnish, uh, called caprothane, I believe it is. All the white panelling in here that you see is all 4mm marine ply, just with a primer. I'm going to basically leave it as a, it's going to be a sanded finish, not glossy, nothing like that, but a primer on the inside, there's a couple coats in the, and the the side covering the actual wall back into the wall has just got a coat on it to help pro help protect with mold and any moisture or anything like that. It is Sunday the 8th of October at the time of filming this. I'll actually be moving into here in two weeks, two weeks today. So um, this video won't be, you may be seeing this video around the time I've actually moved. What I just want to do now is give you a full sort of progress report where we're actually up to. We've got a bench loosely mounted in here. It's a carbon fiber red tinted uh, kitchen top which looks good, it'll serve the purpose. We've got some lights up in the roof now, which we're working on lights right now. We've also got solar um, in here, which will hopefully have powered in the next day or two, fully ready to go. So we've, I've made some pretty good progress. I'm pretty happy with where I am at. Uh, whether or not it's on target for the actual move in two weeks, I really have no idea, but I guess I'll find that out in two weeks. Obviously, as for costs, um, the carbon bench top is probably expensive to get made because it's carbon fiber. I myself have just used carbon scraps, so really there's no cost. Uh, these lights, these lights which are here, which I picked up from the RV Center in Albany, very cheap, they're only $5 each. So um, there's eight of these in the roof. Pretty simple to install. Uh, they're all independently switched. They will be running off two switches, but they're also all independently switched which will come in quite handy um, just if you want to cut light down or turn it up uh, so those are the costs for those okay this afternoon we're going hard on the cabinetry now these are basically just the faces of all the cabinets um, all as it is it's pretty simple it's six mil ply six mil marine ply I wanted to keep it all very simple very light you can see we cut the doors out of them, those will just go in. Anywhere where I've started the hole for the jigsaw will just be a latch will cover any hole because I didn't actually know of any other way to start a cut that's inside a piece of wood without drilling a hole. I'm being picky here but you can see because this is a mixed hardwood marine ply you can see a lot of color change between some of it that's kind of just being picky uh won't doesn't really bother me but certainly when it comes to matching any wood like if i'm going to do anything in the future we will look at matching all the colors when it comes to the wood what i am using for varnish all i'm doing is a one coat it's a two pot it's called caprothane it's a very high-end marine based varnish completely really overkill for this i am only doing one coat just to seal the water um kind of certainly not the varnish you'd use if you're going to do a lot of touching up because you've got a mix it's two for one you can use thinners to thin it down so that's basically the process very highly toxic so it's fully respirator um, and covered up when applicating all as i'm using again to put stuff down it's just a four inch foam roller it gets a really nice finish on all the wood and then it's just a light sand with probably some 320 towards the end of the job and um, that's the finish quick little afterthought too this caprothane is also quite expensive so if you're looking for a cheap varnish do not go for this
We'll finish this week's video right here. Um, as you've seen, we're doing a lot of paneling work, full interior, basically all, while well, the majority of a lot of the paneling is done, it, in the next video you will see we'll fully break down the solar because that should uh, be working completely in the next day or two. We're going to wire up. We'll show you inside the electrical charging box because everything's going to be kept to one place. We'll also finish all the paneling. We'll show you all the hinges, all the stuff like that. Uh, kitchen area still got quite a lot of work. And of course the table that is still hasn't even really been thought too much about yet. So um, at the time of the vi this video release, Depending on when exactly it goes up, I may have already moved into it. So um, you can probably check me along on Instagram and Facebook. The links are all down below in the description to find out what exactly is happening. I'm Sam Price. I'll see you at the beach.